In this video, I'm going to show you how to use generative actions to orchestrate your co-pilot. So the first thing you might actually be asking yourself is, what is conversational orchestration and, or what is orchestration? And we're gonna start with a simple explanation of this. So I'm gonna to try to explain this at a very high level of what is uh, conversational orchestration. Think of it like you're going to say something to this co-pilot or virtual agent and you're going to speak to something and when you're speaking to it it needs to be able to delineate where you what you're asking for and so when you think about it there's a video i have around uh explaining nlu and intents and entities you should totally go watch that video if you haven't already uh watched it uh, it'll help you understand the general concepts of natural language understanding but orchestration is specifically where what I'm doing is being able to determine when you say that you're wanting something, are you saying that you want to order pizza? Are you saying you want to install a door? Maybe you want to check the weather. I'm not really sure what you're asking for, but being able to determine that and route the conversation to the correct path is the concept of conversational orchestration. And then once I've routed you upon that path, I can then say, maybe you said you wanted to install a door. Well, then I go through the process of collecting the information around what is your name or what is your address. But imagine that you switch context on me and you want to change from, I'm asking you, what is your name? But you actually change and say, I want to order a pizza. Being able to do that is the concept of context switching as well. So all of these are parts of the conversational orchestration capabilities of your co-pilot. So now that we understand what conversational orchestration is, now let's think about how do I do that? And the way that we do that is we use a natural language understanding engine. Again, go see the video that explains uh, about natural language understanding if you need more details. But assume that we understand what these are you actually have three different natural language understanding engines that you can use for conversational orchestration within Copilot Studio. You have one which is out of the box, which is this BERT-based model that is making it so that you can do this as a um, training effort, but it's all self-hosted. You don't have to do much. You just put in trigger phrases and things like that to train it. Um, then you can go to the next one, which is you can go use Azure CLU, which is a custom language understanding model that you go build and host in Azure yourself and be able to connect that in for the orchestration engine. The last option that you have, which is going to be the focus of this video today, will demonstrate some of the out-of-the-box NLU capabilities, but I want to show you the difference when we actually switch over using uh, generative actions as our large language model or using Azure OpenAI to be able to orchestrate the conversation and the impact that that has on your Copilot. So now we're inside of Copilot Studio and all I've done is created an empty uh, Copilot here for us to start working with. Um, I did configure it on the generative AI side to use Microsoft.com as a fallback for generative uh, answers, but other than that, uh, that's all it does at this point. So what we want to look at is we want to think about creating some new topics. And so what I want to do is I want you to see how this looks, first of all, when we don't have generative actions turned on um, as the orchestration engine. So you're going to see here that you've got topics, you've got plugin actions, and you've got like system topics up here at the top. So this UI will change a bit whenever we turn this on in the future. Um, but for the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take advantage of the ability to generate a topic for us. We're going to make a uh, order pizza topic, and we're going to just take the default configuration here and let it go create us a uh, a topic that will allow us to order pizza. Okay, now that it's created this topic for me, you'll see here that you have tr trigger phrases that have been created. 
And you, you can even click here and you can see all the different training that has been done. Now, this is against that BERT model or the out of the box model that we already talked about. So you can say anything around this type of uh, conversation to be able to get it to respond to you. So you don't have to say one of these trigger phrases because it is training a natural language understanding engine and, and a model there. It's just that you are giving it, uh, typically we were, we re normally would tell you to say at least five different ways of saying the same thing. It's usually sufficient to get a pretty good result. So we're gonna save this real quick. Okay, and now that we've saved it, I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna say, order a pizza. And when I order the pizza, you can see it will go through. And just like we said before in the earlier, this is the orchestration that says, go to the topic that's actually for, uh, for this. And I'll even turn tracking on here so you can watch it. And I'll say pepperoni. And then let's just say, I want five of those. And here you go. And now I've ordered five pizzas. So, this will change when we move over to dynamic chaining with generative actions as the orchestration engine. And so let's go ahead and look at how you would do that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just gonna reset this for you so you can uh, have a new conversation. We'll go into generative AI over here. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, you will see this dynamic chaining with generative actions preview. When you flip this and hit save, What's going to happen is it's going to go in and convert this over to use a large language model. Now, once we've done that, I'm going to go back and you'll see that now you have these filtered uh, capabilities of all the different things that are the different assets that are available to your conversational agent. And you'll notice here that we have our order pizza one. And if you'll look, you'll notice a big difference here. It'll say dynamic chaining preview. And you can see here, this is the actual um, prompt that is being provided to the model to explain when should you orchestrate this topic when people are talking about pizza orders and things of that nature. So now that we've done that, um, let's go and create us yet another topic. And so we'll just go back over here and we'll just say add Let's do the same thing. Let's create from a description. But I have a description I've used in the past, which will allow me to be able to schedule a door install. Um, and we're just going to put that in so that we have uh, a second topic that it's going to create for us. So we'll just drop that in. And you'll see here is an explanation. And we want to create this. Now, now that I'm creating it this way, I'm not necessarily going to get trigger phrases. I'm actually going to get the prompt that tra is trained up here instead. And you'll see that it goes through and it gives me a whole bunch of things to collect to, um, to schedule a door install. So we're gonna save that. And this will allow us to have both of these different topics available to us so that we can see it actually orchestrate between the two. And again, we've got tracking turned on over here. And so now if I say, uh, I would like to order a pizza, please, what's going to happen is it's going to look at what was trained in those prompts. And you'll see it triggered the pizza here. And I can go to margarita. I can say that I want four of them. And voila, you've got your four margarita pizzas. But I can also be able, I can say something such as, uh, I need to schedule a door install. And when I say that, what's going to happen is it's going to automatically realize that I need to go into the door uh, install component and you know I could go fill this out and you can see that it will move on uh, and and such and so we won't go ahead and complete this because it's a fairly long dialogue here but you get the concept of the fact that it is now using a large language model and it's using these prompts up here to be able to show you uh, or to make the decision on which topic it should fire now, 
let's go a step further than this. So there was a video that I recorded around plugin actions. And so let's actually create a plugin action and let's go further. So let's see what more we can do than just orchestration uh, when we are building our conversational agent with plugin actions so that you can see the power of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to say that I want to add a plugin action. And if you're not familiar with a plugin action, in a very high level, it is basically allowing you to access an API. And in the case of this, we're going to do the weather API that is available from MSN. So we're going to go create this uh, plugin action. It's going to create a connection. So if you have to authenticate to the API, this is where you would do it. And then we're just going to go ahead and look at this and say, okay, I think pretty much everything's okay. But what you're going to see here is it has two different inputs that it needs. It needs location and it needs units. And, and I want to actually force this to always respond to me with Imperial uh, versus metric. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to select Imperial. And then I'm going to save this and then I'm going to hit finish. Now we'll take a look at this and a look at the prompt that goes onto this. No, notice that in the video where I showed plugin actions before, I actually had to build a topic and then I had to route to this plugin action. But if you'll recall, in that particular video, I explained that there was an actual description right here of the model. Now that we've actually got this set up to do this, and you can see that we have dynamic chaining enabled, and again, you can also see that here, that it's enabled. That means that the large language model can route to this if it wants to do so. So now that we've done that, I can come back over here and let's just refresh our conversation and we'll take a look at this. And I'm going to, I'm going to say to it, um, order this, let's do order a pizza. And you'll see that I can still order my pizza just like we did before. And then, but I can also say uh, to it, what is the weather in Nashville, which is where I'm from. And one of the things that I will be able to do is be able to start passing context into the conversation as well, because now this large language model is taking into consideration the whole conversation, not just what I just did. So, uh, so the example is I can come in here and I can say, can you give me more details? And understand that it's going to realize I'm talking about the weather. And so it gave me more information uh, than it did before about the weather. But I can even say, what is the wind direction? And you'll see that it's going to answer the question about the wind direction. And there you go. So keep in mind, the key here is that because I'm now working with a large language model and the runtime that is processing the conversation can now take into consideration more than just the one sentence that I pass through. Traditional language models can't uh, handle the context. So these large language models, I can actually pass the conversation history so that you can look at what I'm talking about and I don't have to then go back and say I'm talking about the weather in Nashville. It just continues the conversation around that API. Now when you're building a topic, you're following a scripted process. So that scripted process, you can't do that. Like I can't go in change my name or something or change my first name when it's asking me about my last name, things like that don't happen because once it's been orchestrated into that scripted conversation, you kind of lose that. But when you start playing with plugin actions and dynamic chaining and within this, you have the ability to actually go back and change things that you've answered in the past. So I hope this kind of helps you understand a little better about how you can use dynamic chaining and large language models for orchestration inside of Copilot Studio. I will also 
thank you for your time today. And also, if you would like to, please uh, like and subscribe to my videos. I will be doing a lot more uh, videos coming out here shortly. There's a lot of new cool stuff coming. And as always, you can try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.